I'm Sherry Hobb, and welcome to Dual School. I'm going to show you how to do a fun etching process today using electricity rather than harmful chemicals. It's really exciting because with the E3 etch system, you can etch your own images onto metal and then make them into beautiful jewelry pieces. I have these etched pieces in process right here, and they've been etched using the E3 etch controller. And I have some images here and they are printed using a toner or a laser copier. And these are ready to go so that you can get started making your jewelry right away. And you will notice that they have a dark contrast with black and white. You don't want any gray scale and you want a dense ink so you want it nice and black so that it will transfer onto your metal. These images are printed on a special E3 etch paper. And the reason this paper is so special is because it allows you to remove the paper easily, leaving just the toner on the metal, which is going to act as your resist. So we have a piece of metal here. I have this little metal blank. And this is copper. So the E3 etch works on copper, brass, and bronze. And I have this ready to go, and I'm going to sand it first. So use a 400 or 600 sandpaper, and you want to sand the surface really well to make sure it's not very shiny to allow that toner to stick to the metal. To clean it, you can sand under water or use a little rubbing alcohol to clean and make sure you don't have any fingerprints or any dust remaining after you've sanded it. We are going to put this image face down on our sanded prepared surface and trim around the edge to make sure that the paper matches pretty close to our metal shape. So I'll just trim a little of this off. It doesn't need to be exact, but pretty close. You don't want too much extending over the edge of your metal. So after you've trimmed it, you're ready to heat set the toner onto your metal. So I'm using a regular household iron and I'm working on a flat wooden surface. You could use a piece of particle board, but please don't use your ironing board. That's too soft. You put your toner based image face down. Now, if you have text on here, you want to make sure it's printed backwards so that it appears the right orientation when you've finished your piece of jewelry. And I've got a pillowcase here that I'm going to cover as a press cloth right over top. And then you want your iron set on a cotton or linen, a fairly high setting, and come straight over top and press hard down with the iron to make sure you've got good pressure. Now, when you're done, you should see that the paper is sticking down to the metal wherever the black toner is. If you see any little bubbles, then you may have to iron it a little more, or that may be where the white of the paper is. So don't worry if it's just where the white of the paper. So when that's nice and flat, we're going to put it in water to soak the paper off. So drop it in the water, and we're going to wait till that paper doesn't look quite as white. It'll sort of go a little bit translucent for in a few minutes as that paper soaks. After the paper has soaked for a bit, then you can take it out and start to remove the paper with your fingernails. Your fingernails are always your best tool to remove the paper and roll it from the center out. Now, if you see some black toner coming off, then you can simply start over by taking some acetone and it will take that toner right off and then you can iron a fresh image onto the surface. And you'll see how beautiful this looks with this image that's ready to etch. It's going to etch where we see copper, not where the black toner is. Only where the copper is is the part that's going to etch away. So I removed this paper. And I'm, I need to um, remember that if it's a little bit hard to remove, you can just redip it in the water. If you see a bit of this fogginess, don't worry at all. That's just the fine fibers that are still there. But as long as I can see the copper design that I've got, I'm ready to go. So that's all you need to do on that part. And then take a paper towel and just dry this off. And now I'm ready to stick an electro wire on the back and get it ready for etching. If your blank is really shiny, you may want to scuff up the back just a little bit to help that tape stick. So just a quick sanding will do there. And you want to use a strong packing tape, the kind that are used for packing boxes, not a thin cellophane tape, because it's got to hold up in that solution for quite a while while you're etching. So I put a piece over about half of the back here. 
and then I'm going to attach my electrode wire. And the reason I covered half of this is just for the ease of getting the wire on without having to cut little pieces of tape. The wire I have here, this is an aluminum electrode wire, and it has a coating in the middle to help protect the wire so you can use it over and over again. And I've bent just a little S shape or a little bit of back and forth there so I have plenty of surface area to put on my metal. So I place the wire, metal the metal, with the stem of the wire extending over the tape that I've already put on. So we just make a little L bend here so that it's going to sit horizontally in the little pan we etch it in. And then I'll take a second piece of packing tape, put it over the top of the wire and over my existing piece and press down really well so that you've got that wire right on that metal. Make sure that you've got the metal to metal contact which is going to conduct the, which is going to, uh, conduct the electricity. Then you trim off your excess tape and you don't have to be too careful here. Now something to keep in mind, if before we had taped this off I made any mistakes, I could have uh, fixed those with an oil-based paint pen and then I hit it with a uh, quick heat set. I use a rubber stamp heat embossing tool to remedy any little mistakes that I might have made. This also will work around the edges of your piece to protect those, although they don't etch very much, but if you want to have perfection, you can put a little bit of ink around the edge. And that's all done before we tape it. So we've got that taped off, it's ready to etch. Now let me explain about the etching system before I begin. This is the E3 etch controller. It's a, it's a lightweight, small device that takes the place of a large, expensive rectifier. It controls the power while you're etching so that you don't have to do any thinking or any of the work and it etches each piece no matter what size perfectly. The way that this works is that it's going to conduct electricity and it's going to plate the copper to the bottom of the stainless steel pan that we have here. Our electrolyte that we're using is copper sulfate. It's mixed with distilled water in the pan and that's what's going to allow the etching to occur. Make sure that while you're handling this that you wear a dust mask when the powder is loose or that when you're touching it you wear rubber gloves because you want to make sure that you're, not, that you're safe in the studio. Once the crystals are dissolved you're ready to etch. And I just have some ordinary uh, chopsticks that are unsplit here that you might have in your home and you slip it over the wire and that's going to hang the piece in the pan to keep it from touching the bottom of the pan. So when I've got my piece ready to go, I'm going to put it in the pan and I'll make sure I can adjust it through these unsplit chopsticks that that piece is about maybe a little less than a half inch from the bottom of the pan but not touching. And then you're ready to attach your wires. Now these are only 12 volts so it won't harm anything to touch them and it's very safe. You clip the black a wire to your stainless steel pan and then you clip the red wire to the exposed part of your electrode wire and you make sure that your piece is not touching the bottom of the pan. I may need to slide it up a bit and adjust it as you need to and then you can use a few pieces of tape just to hold everything while you're working. Now you notice that on your E3 etch, the green light will tell you that your power's on and the red light shining will tell you that you have a current which is allowing everything to work properly. And what this does is it plates the copper that's exposed on your design down to the bottom of the stainless steel pan. And the cool thing is that none of your solution becomes a hazard. You can use it over and over again. So I simply take a coffee filter when I'm done and I strain my solution, keep it in a plastic bottle that's marked and away from children, and then I just use it whenever I need to etch and you can use it over and over again. So this process will take anywhere from two to three hours for a nice etch. If you go too long, it'll etch all the way through the metal, so you want to watch that. And when you're ready, you retrieve your piece, untape it, rinse it off in some water, and you'll see that you still have your toner on the metal. 
You simply remove this with some acetone and then you're ready to make jewelry with your piece. There are dozens of ways that you can design your own jewelry using etching and the ideas are just limitless. I hope you enjoy etching as much as I do and thank you for joining us today at Jewel School.